Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the five day precipitation and temperature from the UK Met Office run as we've got some stunning days coming up and then we'll also have a look at the longer range forecast with the GFS, GM, Eastern BF and their ensembles as it does look like we will be seeing much colder weather next week. The severity of that cold weather is still yet to be exactly determined but it definitely looks like it's going to be turning chillier, much colder than average, more like winter with the upper air temperatures towards the surface, temperatures will be in the mid to potentially high single digits, feeling much colder with overnight frost. A big contrast to this week where we're seeing high teens, spring to summer like weather. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if we do start on the live radar. Um, you can see there really is nothing going on. Um, just emphasises the water wall sunshine we're seeing for most people. The far north of Scotland has a few patchy showers within some thicker cloud, but it is pretty isolated. Uh, just unfortunate if you are under this. Elsewhere, though, it is stunning with this massive area of high pressure with beautiful clear blue skies. There is the potential for a few showers to pop off in sort of central areas through the Midlands, northern and northeast England, perhaps over the course of this afternoon. But it's not looking too bad at all. Really, really stunning indeed out there. And I hope everyone has gone out and enjoyed it either today or in the next few days. Uh, as it still does look like we'll be seeing some relatively warm weather hang around all the way all, all the way to the weekend before things drop off by the start of next working week. So do have a look at what's happening with the precipitation and temperature from the latest UK Mass Office run. Now you can see at the moment this afternoon we are very, very warm with clear blue skies for many, some cloud across the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and maybe the far north of Scotland, and some patchy clouds across Northern England and Central England as well, um, with a few showers popping off, but nothing too major at all. Over this course this evening, some more cloud does spill in from the west, but many areas of England and Wales are cloud-free. Temperatures will topple quite significantly, and by tomorrow afternoon, still a very nice day. Perhaps more cloud further northwards and westwards, with a few patchy showers once again, but it should be really dry, and temperatures should still be up in the mid to high teens. For Friday, once again, some cloud around for some, especially further northwards and westwards. But for many areas, it is just patchy cloud. There should still be plenty of sunshine around. And by Saturday, very similar day. Again, a lot of sunshine, some patchy clouds around. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any showers really there. And similar on Sunday. Perhaps more cloud, especially further eastwards, with more of an easterly flow, meaning more cloud being picked up off the North Sea. But still, a pleasant day with quite a lot of sunshine. But... By Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time, those temperatures will be falling, cloud amounts will be increasing, and we will be seeing the chance of showers that could even be wintry um, into next week, as we do see a much colder air mass spread in from the north. But as I said, the severity of that is yet to be exactly determined, as we'll see with the mid to long range models in a minute. But if we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see earlier this morning, it was pretty chilly, mid to low single digits quite widely, uh, with clear skies uh, and, and still having relatively long nights. We do see those temperatures plummet quite significantly. But by the afternoon, you can see temperatures 16, 17, 18, 19 degrees widely. And again, we will we have seen uh, likely seen 20, 21 degrees this afternoon once again with the warm spring sunshine. This is just repeat really. Tonight again, mid to low single digits for some. Uh, and it, again, by the time you're waking up, it's still pretty chilly. But by the mid-afternoon, uh, by lunchtime, warm once again, widely 15 to 17 degrees, maybe a touch cooler than today, but still really, really quite great out there. We just see that repeating once again through Thursday night into Friday. Once again, 16, 17, 18 degrees. And again, Saturday, a chilly night, but by the afternoon, widely once again, 15, 16, 17 degrees. And continues through Sunday, quite a chilly night for Saturday into Sunday, but Sunday afternoon, 15, 16, 17 degrees once again. But you can see by early hours of Monday, it is looking cold for quite a few, but if you just look further northwards, those, there's much colder air filling in from the North Atlantic and the North Sea. And if we did have a look at those upper air temperatures, 850 HPA temperatures, you'll start to see we are starting to bring a bit of a northerly flow. If you have a look at those 
um, sea level pressure you can see those ice bars are veering more northerly across scotland as that's a sign of things to come as this high pressure retrogresses out into the atlantic and we do start to pull in more of a northerly flow and that is looking likely as we head into next week so we do see how that does play out from the latest gfs run uh, if we just come back to 12 hour time periods you can see Southerly flow at the moment with high pressure over the top of the country, really pleasant. High pressure stays over the top all the way through to the weekend, but it's by Monday we start to see it retrogress out towards Greenland and we start to see those winds veer into a northerly direction by Monday evening. We start to pull in a pretty chilly northerly flow. Now this is where the severity does get um, a little bit muddled within the models in around sort of seven days time. Some of the runs go very, very cold with a sharp northerly wind, as we'll see with the East Indy F run in a minute. Others have that high pressure towards Greenland, not quite as strong, and we see more of a westerly influence with that cold air only reaching northern areas, or the very cold air only reaching northern areas and being cut off. Similar to what we see with the GEM run, the GFS is a bit in the middle, as we'll see with the upper air temperatures. You can see that really cold air does get towards northern Scotland, but doesn't quite spread through the whole country widely. We do go colder, of course, with overnight frosts, but towards day 10 we start to see more of a westerly flow, but it is still chilly. Um, by no means is it mild, it is still chilly with it generally the air coming in off the North Atlantic which is still pretty cold and it will feel much fresher than it does this week, just not quite as bitterly cold as perhaps we would see with the Eastern Rear Front which we'll see in a minute. But I'm pretty confident we're going to be seeing a colder air mass, as we'll see with the ensembles, uh, which does give us the big spread within what the models are showing and um, it is looking, yeah, really quite cold on the ensembles. Now if we have a look at the GEM run, this has been pretty... Um, pessimistic in terms of any, seeing anything colder recently. Um, as we see, the high pressure does build over top and it does try to retrogress towards Greenland, but we never quite get that northerly wind. We just see more of a westerly flow developing. So if we do run it back again and have a look at those upper air temperatures, you can see warm with high pressure, and as that high pressure retrogresses out towards Greenland, you see all this cold air is just to our north but doesn't quite make its way into the UK. We stay more westerly at day 10, with winds coming in from a west to a southwesterly direction. Milder upper air temperatures, but with precipitation around, it's not going to feel as great. So yeah, very interesting seeing that from the GM run. But if we now have a look at the ECMWF run, you see big, big contrasts. High pressure over the top of the UK, um, with all the runs, of course, and that high pressure moves towards Greenland by early next week, and we pull in a full-blown bitterly cold northerly wind with a real cold air mass we see low pressure mixing up within that cold air mass potentially produ producing some snow and maybe even some significant snow especially over higher ground you couldn't even rule out low-lying areas seeing some accumulating uh, snow for a small period of time especially overnight not expecting anything amazing of course it is getting into april um any sunshine will melt any wintriness very quickly this time of year, but it still could be pretty wintry out there with overnight frosts, wintry showers, and as you'll see, bitterly cold northerly wind does move in with cold air mass moving in for all. Overnight frosts are plenty and really cold temperatures, mid single digits, five, six degrees even in southern England, which is sort of average daytime highs in um, in January time. So yeah, proper wintry conditions out there feeling really really quite cold and just emphasize it by having a look at the temperature deviation a good four six eight degrees below average really quite bitterly cold out there so if we have a look at the ensembles which shows that really quite well these are the gfs ensembles you can see warm or at least mild at the moment with upper air temperatures but with sunshine it's feeling warm uh, mid to high teens that continues all the way until sort of early next week sort of sunday monday time um before we see a big drop off you see quite a few are getting down to that minus five minus six degree uh, area even lower than that on some of the runs others are just going a little bit chillier around average or below average but all are cooling down definitely a northerly flow so whether it's bitterly cold or just chillier that is the uncertainty on the ensembles here and then around 3rd of April we see a rise from pretty much all of them to around or above average once again but increased amount of precipitation so even though it'll be warmer air masses it does look like a westerly foe will be building back in with that high pressure not over the top of the UK anymore 
So yeah, interesting seeing that. And if we look at those two meter temperatures, you can see 15, 16, 17 degrees could be a degree or two warmer in a few spots over the next few days. And then by early next week, you see those temperatures plummet to around five to 10 degrees, depending on the exact ensemble member. Again, milder outliers still going for sort of 12, 13 degrees, but the majority are going for that sort of five, six, seven degree range. Pretty chilly indeed. And overnight temperatures in the low single digits, if not towards freezing feeling really cold and precipitation is increasing so could be some wintriness there and of course have a look at the dew points you can see around freezing if not below freezing quite a few of the runs again cold air masses and if we have a look at the snow image you can see there are some snow spikes around for the last day of march and first few days of april again if we do see any wintriness it will be convective based with showers so it'll be very difficult to forecast more than a day or two in advance so no real point looking at that but it just shows you some of the potential there now if we do have a look at the ecbf ensembles which are a bit more bullish with the cold runs this is why uh, i've got quite a lot of confidence in seeing something a lot colder you can see at the moment around average or above average with upper air temperatures with the warm sunshine feeling really quite pleasant and then we see a massive drop off around the 28th 29th of march to around minus 5 at injury for the hpa staying around that for a good three or four days really quite cold you see the operational run there is in the thick of the ensemble so it's got a lot of support there and we see a rise to around or above average around the 3rd or 4th of April, similar to the GFS run, back above average, but with increased precipitation. So westerly flow back in with a lot of low pressure, wet and windy weather. So even though milder upper temperatures, it probably won't feel all too mild out there. But yeah, definitely looking like it's turning chilly, as you can see by the ensembles, very cold indeed. And if you look at those two meter temperatures, you can see even more bullish there with the average of the ensembles that down to around five or six degrees and below freezing at night, really quite quite cold indeed remember this is london further northwards it would be even colder so yeah just let's have a look at glasgow for a second much further northwards and you can see yeah three four five degree highs well below freezing and look at those upper air temperatures even colder widely down to minus six seven eight degrees for a good four or five days of course that cold weather will likely last a little bit longer in the north being closer of course to the source so looking very cold next week so big contrast to this week so again emphasize make sure you go out enjoy the weather over the next sort of three or four five days as by sort of monday time it still might be all right but it will be starting to cool down and by tuesday wednesday next week it could be really quite cold indeed feeling more like winter and even though these temperatures might not look exceptional wind chill also on top of that um, it's going to feel cold out there going to feel raw so make sure you enjoy the weather this week um, before we see much colder weather come next week so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon